might seem obvious, but just be upfront, be proactive. Um, you know, err on the side at the outset of being maybe a little bit too micro or a little bit too focused on details. Um, you know, realizing that it'll be an ongoing dialogic relationship throughout the matter. Um, if you do that, in my experience, just from what I've seen, you're just far less likely to have those that sort of nasty surprise. To find the time and money after the fact, after you've gotten to, into a crisis and went, oh my God, what am I dealing with? And I wasn't ready for it. Um, that's when it's easier. Uh, I, what do you have to say about that, Johnny? So true. <laughs> Most of what I've heard so far and what we've talked about as a group, um, it's like driving a car down the road looking in the rear view mirror. It's, it's a, after the fact, taking care of a problem that erupted, uh, the crisis that you go through, and then defending it, taking it to court, it really is driving in the rearview mirror. What I would propose is that the hidden element of saving a lot of money, time, making things work better is planning ahead. And it's just so hard to do that if it's something's not urgent. To, to all the insurance folks in the room, I'm shocked and bewildered that a crisis response team isn't a requirement of coverage. Uh, I'm bewildered by it. Uh, it should be part of the policy requirement to actually identify the members of the team for this, you know, the several enumerated crises that we were talking about. In the cyber liability world, uh, it's critical, uh, if, if not almost impossible, to get people on board at the moment of your crisis. One of the most common mistakes that people make in cyber liability crisis is they start going out and finding the IT uh, forensic team before they've retained a data, data breach counsel. And so now everything that that IT forensic team is doing is discoverable, which is a major, major mistake. So the first thing you want to do is go out and get yourself your, your IT, uh, IT counsel who's going to represent you through that particular crisis because You've got all kinds of notification responsibilities with uh, regulatory agencies. It's probably your biggest cost that's going to wind up affecting you down the road. You I thought it'd be best to talk about what's the definition of a crisis, and that is a significant threat to uh, operations or reputations that can have negative consequences if, if uh, not handled properly. And obviously, a threat is a potential damage um, to that can inflict, be inflicted on an organization. Um, the types of threats that, that you usually deal with are public safety threats. That's probably your first and foremost, is you have a situation and you gotta worry about the public safety. Um, next, the, a company has to deal with the financial loss that could come from this crisis that just came about. And, and then, uh, then you have the reputation loss that could also come from that. And, um, so 